So, very good morning friends and today I am there before you with one very important topic which is a very general topic but which is related to your life. And so I thought to come before you uh, with a demand because many of the students were asking sir how to face the interview. Being the chief placement coordinator of Dr. Shyamal Prashad Mukherjee University, I am going to produce this video especially for those students who are going to face the ultimate examination of their life and that is interview. वो कहते हैं ना कब तक छुपोगे पत्ते की आड़ में हाँ कभी तो आओगे सदर बाजार में सो फ्रेंड्स इव टुडे और टुमारो यू हैव टू फेस द इंटरव्यू आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस वन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग व्हिच इज ऑलवेज प्लेइंग इंपॉर्टेंट रोल इन इंटरव्यू बिकॉज आई हैव द एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ ऑफ लिविंग अलॉन्ग विद मेनी एच सीनियर ऑफिशियल्स and as i discussed and observed on that basis i am going to share this very mantra before you if you follow it definitely you will make through how much you know is something different but how do you present yourself on a very d day that is very important now friend the communication as you know can be divided into two parts one part is a verbal communication and another part is a non verbal communication i have seen that our university is focusing only upon the verbal part but the non verbal part which is in fact the 70% of your communication is ignored only because it is non verbal isko bola nahi jata hai iske chalte isko kinare kar diya gaya hai friend there are three concepts a b c a as you drive car you know accelerator brake and clutch are the three parts likewise in communication there are three things a for your appearance how do you appear b for the body language and c for the communication so c for the communication in university falls under the verbal communication but your a and b that is your appearance and your body language which also includes your intonation and voices that comes into non verbal communication which is exactly the 70% of your total communication i am going to discuss it uh, before you today i would like to you can see one quotation on the screen that is martin luther quotation spoken in 16th century that he said to quote do not watch a person's mouth but his face he means that if i have to watch someone i do not have to see what exactly he is telling or trying to convince before us rather i have to see his body language where he is silent i have to observe that where he is speaking that does not matter what he is not is speaking and is speaking through gaps is very important for me the nonverbal co communication demosthenes do you remember him he was contemporary like in aristotle period so in a demosthenes he said and he was asked that what is the first part of oratory then he said it is nothing but action then he was asked what is the second part of oratory he said is he said nothing but action then again thrice thrice he was asked what is the part of the oratory he said once again action so friends i see that and you also see that demosthenes is more focusing upon our action that is the first part second part third part and so on without action oratory does not begin does not end and i'll say that your actions are a means of communication or subject to different kinds of interpretation as in deconstructive theory also says when you say something it is not important what do you say but it is important how do you say it that how do you say it is a thing where you are interpreted and that is why if you people love you this is because you are thinking your communication with your body language so here interpretation your good body language leaves no doubt behind and it keeps you a, on a correct track of interpretation you know so this is where now as you see on a screen i have uh, put up one you know chart where you can see that the verbal communication is 35% whereas the non verbal communication is just 60 is 65% means your facial expressions your tone of voice low high fall all these your movement your appearance 
that AI was talking about. Your eye contact, which is very important. Your gestures, your movements, your postures, how do you see it in back? This exactly, you know, constitutes 65%. I ask you, if somebody is there at home, how, how many hours does he speak? He speak only for two to three years out of 24 hours. And the rest of the hours, he is speaking, he is silent. Then how is he judging his personality? Out of his silent, because major chunk of his life is silent. So in silence, how do you live? How do you sleep? How do you sit? How do you walk? How do you move your hands and all? How do you wear your shelf? What kind of colors do you select? These are all constitute 65%. Everything comes under nonverbal communication. We ignore it. So this is a chart you can see in a graph on a screen that there is a conscious and subconscious, you know, uh, uh, picture is there. So our subconscious mind is just like an iceberg which is submerged nine tenth within. So this subconscious decides our nonverbal communication means. Our emotions, suppose I am sad, even if I am presenting myself happy with the help of my words, my face will show it that I am sad. My thoughts influences my expressions. My experiences, past experiences, which is lying underneath, uh, helps me to uh, bring up the different kinds of you know, facial expressions. My soul, what kind of I am made of, what I am evil soul, bad soul, good soul and all. This is also making one impact. And then there is the DNA, which is inheritance. We have inherited some qualities from our parents. That is also somewhere down the line playing an important role in our nonverbal communication. Perhaps you are ignoring this. But once you know that even DNA is playing a role in our nonverbal communication, you will become conscious about this. And if something is, some lacuna is inside that DNA, you will try to improvise upon that. This is not a problem. Practice makes a man perfect and a woman, they are perfectly born. So this is another graphic representation of the same conscious and subconscious. Subconscious as you can see that 9 tenth is submerged within. There we have to work upon. So in a non-verbal communication, our body language, through body language, what are the different areas that is governed by this? Sounds, the way I laugh. <laughs> <laughs> there are different kind of laughs. This sounds makes your personality. <laughs> These are different ways in a different moments you express yourself and this is your way of talking. Suppose you are talking to a person that way decides how you are talking to them and what is your inner mental fabric that is your postures. Are you sitting like this? You are sitting like that? Or doing like this? You are, you know, combing your hair when there is no use of that. You are puffing out, you are puffing down. How do you smoke? <laughs> but that is injurious to health. But even then, I like to say, with seeing the postures, I can say whether the smoker is the boss or the subordinate. Then your head movements, how you are nodding. In South Indian people, nod their head, their head like sideways, even for the yes. So these are the different kind of body languages we have to work upon. Then your hand movements, how do you lift your hands, how do you keep it silent, what is the ratio, your eye movement, your, if, if you are uh, no, if you're a liar, your eye movements will be more than the required, your speed will be faster. Because when you lie, you something you hesitate to uh, show it before the people. So the people movement, the eye people movement moves faster than the required speed. And then there are facial expressions. There are different kinds of expressions. So these, through these facial expressions, you will be reflecting different kind of emotions submerged within you. Then your body contact, how do you shake your hands? Though shaking hand is important right now because we are going for a social isolation. So shake hands may be a different kind of, you know, uh, uh, you know, a study is required in that perhaps it will be stopped now. But even when you shake your hands, there are a lot of messages go that is called haptics, it will be direct later on. And then your closeness, how close you are with the person. Suppose, I will discuss it in later slides. Now, you once again you say that what is, what makes an impression? How you speak 
is total 30% of your impression. And as you, I'd like to remind you that, 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 that Jane Austen has written one novel, Pride and Prejudice. Its first title was The First Impressions. Later on she changed it. Because in this entire novel is based upon the first impression of the hero. Which we, what is the word prejudice? We prejudice word pre means prior judicial judgment. So we make a judgment already in hand, advance in hand, before we talk to some person. With just by appearance, we formulate one kind of concept about a person we are talking to. This is what your interviewer do. Before talking to you, just with your entrance, they have they become prejudiced. They whether you have to be taken in or you have to reject it, to be rejected. This is 38%. How you speak, how do you appear? 7% is words. And 55% is your body language. How do you wear? How do you comb your hair? How do you keep yourself? How do you tie yourself? How, what kind of watches you wear? Your shoes? It is already an old proverb. A gentleman is known by, a man is known by his nature and a gentleman by his shoes. So shoes is what? It's the appearance. So how you speak? Words 7%, your body language plays 55% of role. So your knowledge, keeping your knowledge aside and you have to learn these things also. So the forms of nonverbal communication, one is the conscious communication, which is called hug. Suppose as for example, hug, suppose I hug someone, it is a kind of nonverbal communication. Then there is subliminal. Subliminal communication is communicated to the subconscious of the receiver, like uh, your, uh, you know, uh, your gut's reaction. Means if you are going to take one someone in the company, there will be a kind of uh, gut reaction key. There is something good in that chap. I don't know what exactly is the reason, but I find something good in him. This is called, this, this inference was brought into his mind with your subliminal communication that you did. Then through poli, uh, police or the military uniforms. Uniforms is also a means of communication. Just by seeing this, you know, ID card, anybody can know that I am a staff of, uh, teaching staff of Dr. Shyam Prashad Mukherjee University. So uniform also plays, is a means of communication. Then the dress of your executives, the color is different from the rest of the staff. Then the young beautiful people are often seen in advertisements. Why is so? Because in advertisement, the impression lasts forever. If you see a beautiful model before you, you just remember him or her and then the product comes into your mind. Oh my god, Pepsi, oh, oh, oh Pepsi, oh, that model. So this is the importance of nonverbal communication. The so next one. So volunt there are two kinds of messages sent. One is the involuntary nonverbal communication and one is the voluntary nonverbal communication. Suppose one person who knows that, that my eyes blinks faster than the normal speed when I tell a lie, do not blink. Or suppose you go to a you know, jewelry shop. What happens? That involuntary non-communication, how people do and what happens exactly in a jewelry shop? So you see that a standard jewelry shop, what does he keep? That he keeps a glass window there and he puts before, he manifests and displays a lot of, you know, slides fa forward towards the customer, different kinds of different models of jewelry. And there is a mirror. The jewelry owner do not see the jewelry, he sees your reflection into your mirror. And the moment he sees that your eyes ball became bigger in size, he trusts that you are important in that particular design of a jewelry. So what will you do when you ask the price? He cannot, he cannot, you know, hide the price of uh, gold because it is already displayed by the government every day. But what will you do? He will price the hike of the making charges because he has come to know that you are interested in that particular jewelry. Bus, 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 just by seeing your eyeballs into that. So what did, what happened there? It is involuntary non-verbal communication that he traced out. Likewise, if you tell someone if a papa is there and if you are telling something wrong fact about yourself, you would blink your eyes like that. Ah, ah, ah. Likewise, if you will try to cheat the interviewer, okay, sir, actually uh, I have done uh, computer, uh, then you will blink your eyes more than it is required. But if you are stating a true fact, you will talk 
to him eye to eye. So here the involuntary and voluntary messages are there. You know. Likewise, uh, the function of nonverbal communication is to create impression. As I said, impression is very important. Then the manage interaction. Then expressing different kind of emotions. Then the fourth is the relationals. You know, and then the convey deception. As I taught you, nonverbal communication decept also. Once you become the champion of nonverbal communication, you will also start to deceive people. Because you know that if I blink my eyes more than required, I'll be caught. You won't blink even if you are telling lie. So this is where you can put yourself, market yourself uh, at the desired level. And uh, it also sends messages of power and persuasion because through nonverbal communication, through your walk and all, through your collar, up and down, you can see it. Tell the people that I am a person in organization who, who is in power. Or you can say your persuasion also, or you can say your confidence level. So these are your chin is up, you are confident. So these are the different kinds of functions of nonverbal communication. Then, what are the different types of nonverbal communication? One is kinesics, which is deals with the facial expression, posture, gesture. Second is the how do you see it and all, and what is your facial expression? Then there is oculasics, which is the eye contact. You know? Third one is the haptics, that is the communication of touch. If your touch is genuine, it will touch the emotion also and you will connect better also. Then there is proxemix, means how far you should be there uh, to your potential audience. It depends up to the situation. And your proxemix also tell to the uh, outer world that how near or far you are to the addressee. Now your appearance and artifacts. Because your appearance is the physical characteristics like your attire, your costume, your selection of perfumes, your makeup, your jewelry, what kind of jewelry do you wear. This all shows your social economical background and you have to very much uh, be focusing upon that. And then there is paralinguistics and vocalics like your intonation, your pauses, your volume. Like suppose there is a intonation is very important. Because if your voice throw, your modulation in the voices is not proper, the impact does not come. Finally, the impact before the audience is not very sound. Like there is a couplet in uh, Urdu, Ye chaman zar ye zamna ka kinara ye mahal Ye munakka shuru diwari mehrab ye taak Ek shayam shah ne dalat ka sahara le kar Hum gari boh ke mohabbat ka udaya hai mazaak Ki mere mehboob kahi aur bila kar mujse This is what the oratory I did is very flat. But if you want to create the impression and the grandeur of this couplet, you will have to modulate your voice. And this is called paralinguistics or the vocalics. So you have to work upon it. One example. Ye chamanzar, ye zamna ka kinara, ye mahal. Ye murakkash dor diwar, ye mehrab, ye taak. Ek shahanshah ne daulat ka sahara lekar. Hum garibo ki mohabbat ka udaya hai mazaak ki meri mehboob. Kahi aur mila kar mujse. So if that kind of vocalics you produce, it creates a kind of impact. And always as there is a chromics, chronomics which is called effects of time in communication. How much time you are taking to finish off one dialogue or one statement. If you are slower, like there are many prime ministers in India. Atal Bihari Bajpayee was a good orator but he was taking much time in finishing off his sentences. So sometimes the audience was losing their patience also. So we have to keep all these things. Uh, uh, while I orate. Now, uh, these are the, you can see on a the screen, there are different kind of kinesics. In fear, your body language is same. In joy, you become, your body language is different. When you are frustrated, your body language is different. When you are persuasive, your body language is something different. These are the kinesics, the facial expressions. You see, there are different kinds of facial expressions. There are many students I see that are when beautiful girls step into. So through facial expressions, we get that he is interested in that or that interest or something beautiful you see, you become awestricken. Oh my God, such a lovely Taj Mahal is there. So this is where the different kinds of facial expressions come into scene. And then, these are the kinesics. If you are confident, you would not limp. But if you are confident, you will be like this, you know. If you are hesitant, you will be moving back. If something, you know, you are not liking, you will move back. If you're not confident, you are low depressed, your, your shoulder will uh, be will not form. And if you're confident, you'll be all erect. 
So this posture is there. You through this posture on a screen, you can see that how this U.S. president is dictating his subordinate. This posture shows anger. So your body language says more. You know. So this kinesics is posture when if your position is slumped, you are low spirit. If you are erect, you are in a high spirit or confidence. If you lean forward, it means you are open or interested in someone. If you lean away, means you are defensive or disinterested. If you are crossed arms, means you are defensive. And if you are uncrossed arms, means willingly to willingness to listen. It shows, you know. Then there are different gestures like this and that you use nowadays. You know WhatsApp and there are a lot of uh, smileys into that. And this has different kinds of messages you try to convey. Now through eyes, you can see that the oculix happens a powerful means of communication. Uh, there is a couplet in Urdu that "Kuch dur saath chalo har kahani keh denge." जो आंखों की भाषा ना समझी जुबानी कह देंगे तो जरूरत ही नहीं आंखों की भाषा ही समझ जानी है इफ आई हैव अ पावरफुल मींस ऑफ कम्युनिकेशन थ्रू आईज आई कम्युनिकेट नाउ देयर इज हैप्टिक्स टच यू नो देयर इज अ फंक्शनल और प्रोफेशनल टच देयर इज सोशल और पोलाइट टच देयर आर फ्रेंडशिप और द वार्म टच देयर इज लव और इंटीमेसी सो व्हेन यू शेक हैंड्स विद योर इंटरव्यूअर यू डू नॉट हैव टू बिकम वेरी मच फ्रेंडली सर Uh, no, no, no. You don't have to learn. You have to become very professional. So different kinds of haptics you have to study. There also your boorishness, your, your uncultured way of shaking hands also mars the you know chances of getting selected in the interview. I have seen it. You know? Now your personal interpersonal distances also show that what is the relation with your audience. Suppose you are close to eighteen to twenty inch. You are a highly personal. Uh, people in power always come to suppose they are a chief minister and a person talking to his ear is a person power in the next to the chief minister now the nearness like 12 to 36 inches it's a kind of social interaction in indoor stadium uh, indoor uh, no communication that happens then there is a neutral communication that with 4.5 feet to 5 feet this is there you know Uh, in your slide, you can see in a classroom, uh, you know, uh, across the room, that is in eight feet or something. Teachers or speakers speak like that. So whenever your public speaking is, you know, no more, uh, you know, having maintaining a distance, like in a stage audience in an open ground, it is maintained like that for the sake of security. So this is a different kinds of, you know, uh, non-verbal communication through which we know that how powerful you are and what is the relation of you and your. audience now this is this is what friends if you know it this much the basics i have given you is start to work upon your all these things uh, which i have discussed about your appearance and body languages which include your tone intonations your uh, perfume selection your eye contact your dress sense everything that comes into it and your body language your movements your eyes and everything you please try to see again and improve yourself definitely if you champion upon this you will be selected into if you have basic knowledge of average knowledge of communication if you have extraordinary knowledge upon non verbal communication it will do definitely 100% i am telling if you command over this these points which i have told you you are definitely going to be selected in any interview that you face thank you friends